No. I'll call us to, or to order at 7.11. And these 11 minutes are not going to affect our end time. Because <laughs> Barry is going to be our timekeeper and board monitor. <laughs> He's going to keep us right on track. <clears throat> All right. Any visitors business? Do you have anything to... Yeah, I'm glad to be back. back. All right, <laughs> glad to have you back. All right. So, do you have any comments? Is your comments? All right. <laughs> so, um, next on our agenda is special recognition for some people that we are, that are going to be leaving, you know, at the end of the year. Um, and <coughs> and Reg, who left earlier in the year, and we did um, send him a card, and and but the, I just wanted. We sort of have a special time. I know no one's here, <laughs> but to put it on the record that we recognize the people. So, um, Reg, Wedge is one of them. Um, the mayor, who is a support staff here in the building, who has served for many years, 40, I think I heard, and, uh, is leaving. And um, Carol Fedemore will finish her time with us at the end of the month. Um, so I just wanted to have a minute, if people wanted to you know, give recognition to them to have it on the record to uh, recognize. And there's cookies, if you'd like. Cookies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anita. Uh, aren't there other ones, though, too, though? Didn't um, uh, Maxine what? in the uh, in the, hot, the lunchroom, she's retiring, I think. Yeah. I, I see. Yeah, I, so it, it gets a little dicey with does. the special recognition if you're not recognition yeah, right. everybody. So and I'm a little... Norm, Norm, our husband, also. He's retired too. There are a lot of people that are leaving. Hey, people can retire. And the, the you know, the Stetsons are leaving. As, yeah, exactly. As athletic directors, they'll still be teaching, but I think just a moment to to uh, put it on the just to, to recognize that we have people who've been here for a long time, who've you know been a big help and been a big part of our community are leaving. So just a minute to recognize. All right, and go get a cookie if you want, whenever, because <laughs> I can't take them home. <laughs> All right, um, now, Howard, I was under the impression that Carol was going to be here tonight, but. Yeah, as a matter of fact, she emailed me and said she would be here. Yeah. Maybe she's running behind somewhere. Yeah, she she said I'll see you at the meeting. So. Okay. And that was four-ish or so? Yeah, all right. Okay. Well, um, Community Council, we're going to just skip right on by that because we don't have a student rep and we don't have a principal unless Howard has some information you want to share about Community Council? Nope. <laughs> no. Nobody checked in with me with that. So. Barry, I think they might have nuts, so I got you chocolate. Okay. <laughs> 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 um, All right, then we'll move down. We'll be walking up. Here's your favorite. Here's your favorite. Okay, oh. pesto. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys spend too much time together. <laughs> <laughs> too many <Chris>. committees. <laughs> Did both our student reps graduate? Yes. Yeah. So when they reform the community council and um, I'm sorry, that will be representative. All right. Uh, Allison, has the Hanford, do you have anything to report about the Hanford Careers? Um, I don't have anything to report because I haven't been able to make the meetings. Because of, another, busy. <laughs> because of Act 46. Or um, student graduations or whatever. So they, they did have a meeting in uh, May. Thank you. But nothing substantial happened. So I'll try again. <laughs> I don't want to buy me. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Uh, executive committee report. So the executive committee just met first time in a long time. Um, and we received some of the information about the food co-op that uh, we received at our meeting, we'll receive that. I'm not going to share it all with you because we're going to hear it again from Howard about the food co-op. Um, we 
uh, talked about some the board retreat planning for August. Um, we have a, quite a, a long list of some activities. Val Gardner um, has blocked off some time to come and do some policy governance training of some sort. Um, hoping to have the VSBA come and do do uh, have a discussion about open meeting law. Um, um, Act 46, uh, the, a discussion about the, the uh, different bargaining models, options, and um, uh, to share some of the information that uh, Brad <coughs> Bull and I will be meeting tomorrow with Armando to have an exit interview to you know, get some of his knowledge about uh, our district and his take on our district. So we'll be sharing that at that retreat. So we talked about that. Um, we also uh, steal all ha Howard's thunder later. So <laughs> we'll, uh, some of it we'll, we're going to discuss here. Um, and we, at the end, you all know, um, adopted or approved the renewal of the administrator's contract. Pretty much what we have, and you have the minutes from the 5 6 17 meeting. Jody? I have a question about the uh, board's retreat. How did that come about? The, uh, how, why is it all boards? Uh, well, it was an attempt to maximize the work and have, um, because Patrick's coming on, to have an opportunity for him to, and the, all the boards to work and sort of do some vision work as where we, what's our vision. You know, it'll be his first chance to meet with everybody, so we thought we it, all together. There, that would be a good way. And there also, there will also be maybe some time built in for individual boards to do some individual work. Um, if they, but not, you know, not the whole day. Trying to you know, get as many people together and as much information shared as possible. And do you think there'll be a good turnout with a two o'clock start time? Because I, was yeah, <laughs> I know it was it was hard, but we we're trying to balance that. You know, maybe half a day people could just spare a half a day and and, and spend some time. I mean, we thought about that. It's hard for people who work, okay. and it, you know, evening you can only go so late, and then you're useless. Mm -hmm. kind of thing, so. Do you have a date yet? Eighteenth of August. August asking to hold that safe date. Okay. Um, and Great. more information be about a location and time, a more you know, definitive time. Okay. Hopefully there'll be a schedule, so maybe if there's something that you can't make for all of it, but it fits in that you can make for some of it, that you'll be able to. Um, okay, awesome, thank you. Sure. All right, anything else? All right. We'll move down to board items. The monthly financial report was enclosed in your packet, and Howard's here. So if you've got questions or clear, you know, clear, need some clarifying information, he's here. Do you have anything to start us off with, Howard? No, yeah, no, I want to say again, uh, we did pretty well this year at keeping track of the monies, and uh, we're looking at a. A budget surplus of somewhere around a half a million dollars. So that's pretty good. Which, you know, with Manny decided their budget, it, you know, it fits. But last year we had 305, I believe it was, somewhere in that. In that. But we still want to spend some of the money on the building. And so we're going to continue to spend. So we may incur some more expenses on the building here. And you can see what's going on on the outside. So we're, we're making progress on what our vision was to try to spend the money on things that are going to help the electric bill and, and give improvements to the safe improvements and benefit the school. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, last month was the first month that the pool cover went on completely for a month. The electric bill dropped $2,000. There was no other reason for the electric bill to go down. $2,000. So we're, hope, we're hopeful that a lot more improvements we still want to do. Well, I know Alden was at the meeting, uh, of the carousel meeting, I believe, on the, uh, in May when I was on vacation. He told you. But we've been working on these plans for, for over a year now, trying to get things done. And you can see <coughs> the process at the school, but 
it costs money. And like I told the EC committee, you can make a dollar out of 99 cents, but I can't make 31 million out of 99 cents. And that's what the project was. But I think we're doing fairly well, but I'll let you be the judge of that once we get done with the improvements. Um, I think the air quality is, is uh, going to improve here. I think uh, the use of electric is going to get better. Um, we're working in the food service area now in the uh, dining hall. That's why we're here. Remediation of asbestos and we're doing all the hallways. What we'd like to do in the future is to try to do about this. There's usually six classrooms here that are connected because of the way they connect. And what we'd like to do is, re, you know, like in the future, remediate asbestos, mm -hmm. you know, like in that six room area and then redo that area like a six room. So, but we have other concerns. Uh, in three years, we'll probably have to do the gym floor. Uh, we've been asked by people to do that. And there's other needs that are out there that we have. Um, but the biggest one that I just want to mention is that uh, we're doing HVAC cleaning. We did an HVAC cleaning of the vents in Moncton, and it turned out so well there that th these vents should, have been, should be cleaned out about every five years. And the Moncton vents had never been cleaned out in the history of the school. And uh, so it's a costly uh, task, but we want to we wanna make sure we can do it. We can't do it with this money. But we do have some needs that we want to fill with some of this 500000 So we intend to see if we can spend some of it before year end, which is June 30th. So. Any discussion? Anything in the financial resource you have questions about? Allison? Um, last time you had mentioned that there might be higher transportation costs assessed to us. Has that been? Um, well, yeah, it, it, it didn't. It did come in, but it didn't come in as high as we thought it was going to be, and that's another issue because we were trying to decide when Mongo came on whether we would buy some buses to transport some of the kids that need special buses, or whether we do it right now. It's sort of hard to keep track of little buses when you're you're trying. So at this point, we sort of passed on it. We will take a look at it again in the budget development period coming up this year to see if we can maybe buy another couple of buses if we continue to have high needs to transport kids to Burlington. Because this gets expensive and sometimes the only way we can do it is by green cab and it becomes very expensive. So, any other needs we have to fill. Any other questions? Uh, Howard. Armando spoke to us a couple of meetings ago about the temporary classrooms in the back, and I, and I know just in traveling here that I've seen some things happening. In, in oh, sure. There's one being yep. um, disposed of or something. One of them we sold for, for we actually sold the second one out uh, for fifty two hundred dollars. Yeah, we got fifty two hundred dollars <laughs> wow. for it, wow. and awesome. probably we would have had to pay. We figured about thirteen to fourteen thousand to dispose of it. So we feel we had a $20,000 blitz to do that. <laughs> awesome. We've had that building for quite a while, and it cost us about $60,000. So we, we feel like we did pretty well on the deal. Yeah. So it will be, it was supposed to leave. I don't know, did anybody see it? It was supposed to come out yesterday. But the person that bought it has bought two other trailers in the area, and so he's trying to get it out. He was told he had to get it out this week. So uh, the other one, um, what what I talked to Amando about, we decided to do. We're not using the White House right now. We're using that as a storage. It has a bad roof. Yeah, it has a bad roof, and we need to put money into it. And uh, it needs a lot of work inside to, to make anything out of it. And it becomes a it becomes a problem. So, you know, we we put it on. You know, and I haven't used it. There was a request to use it, but the, the thing we're trying to do next year is to try to move the cat kids into the building. And we've been trying that now for two years since I've been here. So we're making a step forward because now when the second trailer leaves, which we think will be another year or so, then there's no other place to put them. We're going to have to come to the school, and we feel that that's important to do. 
So we, we do have a lot of people that don't feel that way, but you know, I think it, it's come to the issue where these kids deserve a right to be inside the school district, and, and basically we feel, we feel strong about that. I've talked to Wando about it, I've talked to Susan about it, and we feel the kids should be in here. So. Um, can you explain the reserve for negotiation line whether that's spent okay, or not? I, I, All right. The way it looks, it's not spent. <laughs> I, I know, Barry. That's that's why when when this was printed out, you'll notice on the reserve for negotiation line on page one of the expenses. What it was, it was it was in the encumbrance column, column right? So it has since we moved it to the budget balance because that money has been reallocated to other lines in the budget. So when we when we took everything out, we moved it to the other lines. So people are getting paid. So if it was a professional 1,100 staff, their pay and their retroactive pay got into that line. So if you go to the 1,100, 5111 up there, you'll see that all these lines are starting to fill in. So that's where it was. When we originally put reserve for negotiations in the budget, you know, there was just not the salaries. There were other things that had to go yeah. in there. So, and to be honest with you, when we removed them, it, it took us a while because, you know, it took so long once we got the budgetary numbers of what the salary increases are going to be, but now they did get moved out. So that's why that is, an, it looks a little daunting there, but it, it's, it's been paid. The only thing that exists in these financial statements and encumbrances now are the four unpaid summer payrolls that the teachers are entitled to over the next four pay periods. And the first one will be paid out July 1st. Okay. Thank you. Yep, yeah, you're welcome. Okay. All right. Any other questions? We'll move down to the food service cooperative. Um, Howard's going to share some information. Uh, I think this was it. it was included. There were some answers to some questions. Yeah, let me see if I can find that included from yes okay. in the packet. Um, and then uh, this is something that you, you'll share the information you shared at EC about Kathy's hopes or wishes. Yeah, um, there's, there's been a problem with relation to collecting receivables, and I think all you're aware of that, especially since the March carousel meeting when it was brought up and Kathy addressed it, and basically it gets frustrating because some of the people don't pay are adults, they're employees, and, but they're also students that seem to come to school and they can't, they, they don't have any money to pay. Now, a lot of these kids maybe don't have pre and reduced because their parents won't apply for it. So Kathy's philosophy has been ever since I started here that she would never not feed a kid and basically she gives them food no matter what. Um, the question becomes whether they get a sandwich or whether they get a full meal. In most cases they serve them a sandwich and then basically you know that's the way they go for the day. However, what she has a couple of philosophies now, and one of them I said that I would bring to the boards and, and we brought it to the EC board, is she at one time feels that uh, old, some of the school districts are starting to go for full free paid kids' lunches in the schools, that there will be no free and reduced, no uh, other, everybody would get served and for free. And we haven't looked at the aspect of how much it would cost yet or how much the impact would be. We do know that we support the program with $195,000 of district-wide money. Um, but what happens is uh, some people don't pay. So there's a question now, there's some people that start off not paying and then they wind up in free and reduced. So once they become free and reduced, it's hard to collect the money because they've built up a bill. So the EC committee has given me some uh, guidance in how to handle these, and we're going to write off some of these bad debts up to the amount of whatever our uh, excess will absorb this year. Okay? 
and going forward we're asking for guidance hopefully at the carousel meeting in August when we all meet all right, for the retreat and hopefully this will be discussed at that point and maybe call for policy. We're not asking that you just do a pre policy at this point. We know that wouldn't happen for at least a year or so. But she just asked me to bring it to the board. I told her I would, right? But the idea we wanted to at least get a policy where we would address when somebody stands in front of Kathy or one of her employees and say, I don't have any money, I can't eat. So the idea was to service those kids and feed them. So um, the EC did give some sort of guidance, yep. you know, that, some guidance. that seemed everyone was in agreement that they did, didn't want kids going without food. Certainly an adult, we could tighten up on the adult piece um, where, you know, they could have, we could have a discussion about what's acceptable. And because I think you said there was like $2,000 worth of debt on adults who didn't pay their bills. So. Okay. I mean, <laughs> so, you know, the kid, the kid piece, if they qualified after for free and reduced lunch, I think we all agree, then we got to let that go. But and to be honest with you, this is not a Kathy problem, this is a national problem. Mm -hmm. And if you read the literature on it, it's pretty sad. My own town of, of South Burlington, uh, a year or so ago, was 541000 in the hole. And they've decided to put 50000 a year into it to start making the payments to reduce the amount that they're on. Over how many years did that accumulate? I, I'm not sure. I mean, just know. reading the kick in the can down the road yeah. subject. Yeah. So I'm not sure how long. You, you're talking about South Burlington or you're talking about ours? No, the 500. Ours is 20, right? Yeah. Around 20. Yeah. Well, if I read this correctly. Yeah. So what happens is when we look at this, Right, the ID. Well, ours is actually 34 at this point. The benefits. Okay. So, what what the issue becomes now? Well, in South Burlington, it wasn't that the bad debts were 541. The deficit was 541. Okay. Cumulated over food. You know, we've been running right now. We feel that we'll run about 20,000 to the good with the deficit. So we feel that with the 100 with the uh, subsidy. So with 195,000. We feel at the end of the year we'll be 19 below the subsidy. Did we get? Did you get that in your packet? Because I'm looking through the packet and I don't have that handout. No. Kathy's memo. Do you have memo? I just have the memo. memo. Okay. Yeah. They're not seeing this. The, that no, that yeah. okay. that says it's um in, up included and it wasn't. So, um, sorry. Yeah, we, they're estimating nineteen thousand one hundred and fifty-three dollars and sixty-nine cents to the positive. And you can see my notes if you want to see it, if you want to see the numbers. Joe? Um, was that number, the 19,000, after you wiped out the bad debt? No. That's before. That's before. Okay. Yeah, so the executive... And we figured out about 9,000 of the debt relates to kids that were in free and reduced or and eventually became free and reduced or became free after they went into the program. So that's the idea that we figure that, you know, those are the ones that we're probably going to attempt to write off because we're never going to collect that money. Plus, under accounting standards, you got to be reasonable, and if it's an uncollectible debt, you have to report it as such. So we're still going to attempt to, count, to try to collect the debt that's on the book, especially from the employees and the adults that owe. Mm -hmm. And we're still going to attempt to try to collect from the parents up through uh, the situation. I mean, I don't think our intent is to open this up for anybody to just come in and not pay for a meal. I think the intent is if a, ch if a child. The other thing, there is a rule out there, and even Amanda was not familiar with it, and Kathy showed it to me, where a principal has a right to add somebody to the free and reduced to get meals if they see that they're not getting fed properly. So it's in, the, and she saw it in the standard, so it's there. The only thing it's not supposed to be used as a coverall, it's supposed to be used in, in, uh, in a case, you know, case by case basis, but not to use it as just a general rule. So. I mean, I also thought, and I mentioned this to the executive committee, that um, possibly 
we could do, we could have some sort of a, not, not GoFundMe specifically, but something along that line for people who would like to make sure that there's money available, a pot of money, so that people, could, so the kids could have their lunch paid for if that's what is required. Um, simply because, you know, there's all the wish lists in, in the school rooms so that people buy supplies and bring them in and all of that stuff. Well, there's not a whole lot more important than feeding the kids at lunchtime. So I brought that up. I'm not sure how that would work or anything like that, but I do kind of feel like I know a lot of grandparents out there that might not have kids in school right now that might think, I, I could, you know, write a check and pay for, you know, a couple dozen lunches for kids that can't do it. Well, the reason why I came up was because, you know, Kathy's reports to me and we talk about collecting of the receivables all the time was brought up. And she has an obligation not only to feed the kids, but she has a financial oversight of that program. So that's why we wanted to bring it to the boards and see if we can get some uh, guidance on how people feel about it and what should we do. Okay. Okay. Can I just say, that? Kathy Alexander is phenomenal, mm -hmm. and um, I've been fortunate enough to know her when she was at Ferrisburg, and the wonderful thing she did there, she has always gone the extra mile to make sure that kids get fed. That's a very important thing to her, so um, I would fully support anything that she suggests because it's well thought out and well researched and, and above all well intentioned. So. She deserves everyone's support. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we'll talk about this at the board retreat. This will be one topic for discussion when we're all together. Kind of, you know, where do we see where we're going? You know, is this something we would all support? You know, and how do we move forward to get there? So, Can I finish my other sure. list? Oh, okay. sure, Howard. So, uh, <laughs> The one thing is, is good news is that the IT, uh, we will be up to one gigabyte bandwidth in all the schools in the first week of July, and that's everywhere except for the SU office, we don't have that school. But all the schools, we'll be the first school district in the state to have that according to our uh, provider. So uh, nobody else has it. So we've worked hard to try to get that work. We've also changed the phone system in this school by little or no cost. I worked out a deal with Waitsfield Common, and um, uh, and basically the, they're actually ins they've installed the system. We still got a couple of things they have to do, but that that's in there and going. Um, you know, one of the other things I'm asking, and I'm probably going to put in the budget next year, just to give you a full <laughs> point, that um, the HVACs have never been cleaned out in most of the schools here. We just recently did Moncton at a cost of about. $19,000, I believe, and it's turned out to be very good. Um, the air quality in the school has benefited. When you look at the pictures and the test data related to the prior and, and the post of what was going on there, it's exceptional what happened. The principal actually told me that her hair now lifts because the suction from the intake is really good. Before, she said you would put a piece of toilet paper up there and it wouldn't move. And it, it's, it's come great. And, and uh, the maintenance person out of that building, Steve Raymond, just feels that it's been good. So Alden and I have talked to Amanda, and you know, my mom's not going to be here, but we explained to him what we wanted to do. And I feel that we should probably try to budget it now and then. Building like Mount Nave, it's going to be a huge expense, a lot more than twenty thousand um, dollars. So because of the size and the ductwork that's up there to do, but I think it's worth doing, um, and I'll probably ask you for that come fall. So we'll see what happens. The other thing we have a gym floor that we feel that it'll last another two or three years, and then it'll have to be replaced. Um, we've been pricing them and going around looking at gym floors. We just been we were over at Mount Mansfield about two months ago, and they showed us a gym floor that cost them less than two hundred thousand dollars, right? And uh, but that's the type of cost you're probably going to have if you put in a new gym floor. So that's that's the other thing uh, that that basically I just wanted to mention. 
We still have locker rooms to do, we still have bathrooms to do, and we're hoping to do, like I said before, three to six rooms at a, at a time during a summer run. But we only have eight weeks, and it's, you know, eight weeks most of the time, and basically it's tough to get done, you know, and schedule people to get it done. Sean, can I, I would love to um, request some seating out in front of the building. There was a beautiful plan that got put together, oh, last fall maybe, um, and it had, it had some landscaping, it included the lights that are out there now, but they ripped out all the seating, and so perhaps that could be something we could look into. We, we did have a plan for that, mm -hmm. but we've been blocked by the artwork that's in front of the building. And we've been asked about the artwork, where it emulated from, whether it's something we can move, change, or whatever, and we just can't get any traction on it. Um, under that artwork is just blot cinder block. There's no um, bricks underneath there. So if that was ever removed or put to another place, we would probably put a stone, type of stone in there to cover the front, which would probably look real good, and then clean out that whole front area and put in bent seating and things for kids on the outside and then clean it up. The trouble is, is that we've always been told that we can't touch that artwork. So, what, what, so who, who says that? This is what we've been told is, you know, and maybe, so, you know, you're talking about a, the ski jump. That's, that's the thing. Hmm. That it was something that I shouldn't bring up or touch yeah. or, you know. Well, I would look to our policy and it would seem to me that the maintenance of the building would be we have a good taking time. care of the assets. We have a great yeah. looking mm -hmm. plan to replace that. And Sean is aware of one of the parts of that plan. And uh, so if that's something that we can do, we'd be glad to uh, Maybe once, proceed in that Once Patrick manner. comes in and we all sort of, we, yeah, we're revisiting policy with yeah. the policy governance committee, perhaps then we'll... Because that just sounds like maybe a, well, it's always better. Like a, a past practice, a past practice issue practice. Yeah. instead of a policy right. issue. Right. Because that just doesn't... Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like that's then, never, that's, let's just say it's never come before the board yeah. the whole time. Well, that's that. funny because I was told not to bring it up. That's what I was told. Leave it alone, don't bring it up. Huh. So, Interesting. So Interesting. I, I'm I think a little this gutsy is, tonight, so I, I brought it up. I think this board is open <laughs> to hearing about bring it. Bring it up. Yes. <laughs> bring it open to that. It's working. <laughs> yeah, one other thing I just wanted to bring up, and I'm bringing this up to all the boards as we go around, is the fact that the NEESU lease over that we have at the SU office is more than halfway now over. Um, with the cost of capital, it may be worth a look at building the SU office, a new one, on this property somewhere, maybe uh, where near where the White House was. Now apparently there's old plans that basically included the White House and, uh, you know, we feel that, you know, we can start having a discussion about that. It's probably going to take a couple of two or three years just to get something going. But by that time, we'll be at the near end of the lease. And we think it's worth looking at. The cost of capital now is so cheap that we may want to look at that. We're paying $67,000 for rental space over there. So that could be put to some nice payments for the building. We got a nice so. trailer out back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is less than the old blank space. Put a new trailer in. That is less than the old place. Yeah. The room with the fire. Give a new trailer. Well, that's what. Oh, the cost less than the old building. The right? cathedral. The yes. I'm not sure about that, Barry, because I I didn't think I wasn't around. That's right. So I don't really know. So. Yeah. I mean, while we're talking about building stuff, this is one thing that I just want to get on the record. I'm not sure how we deal with it in policy, but the the fact that. We have so many ceilings here that have been rendered infinite, if you will, and non-functional in their original use because of the paintings on them. I feel like if that's something we need to address in policy so that that doesn't happen anymore, uh, so that it's clear that if there's going to be a change in a room of any kind, painting or, or whatever, that it needs to be cleared through the, um, uh, the ASHU uh, facilities. Um, and not only that, to be honest with you, that's a code violation, and we've been trying to deal with it 
Um, we've, we've, uh, we went, to, I went to Armando again, one of my good days. I went to Armando and asked him if we could remove all the excess appliances out of all the rooms in the building. We have an environmental club that basically has written up the school and nobody's paying attention to it. Mm -hmm. So Alden and I have paid attention to it. And I went to Armando and told them we need a policy. So starting the new school year, there'll, there'll only be certain areas where there'll be refrigerators, coffee pots, and things of that nature. And we feel that, you know, we had a 15% increase from the electric bill. The rates went up 15%. Mm -hmm. So, and even with that, the, the bill went down 2000 for the swimming tool. So we're trying to try to get these bills down and, and we just need help. So he told us and I said, look, you gotta, he didn't want to at first, but then he, when we explained the numbers to him, you know, he, he, he agreed and, and basically so we set the policy. To, so is that something that uh, it also happens at the elementary school? It's happened in every school. So I, I, I guess my question is, is that it, that sounds like that's an SU policy, uh, well, SU-wide, rather than it, trying to duplicate in every school? Or is it a procedure, I'm wondering? If well, we just set it up as a procedure. We so, said that, you know, because of the cost, you have to remember, people bring in appliances that haven't been vetted we don't know if they're safe. We don't know how old they are. We have people that bring in furniture with improper fire tags, and mm -hmm. we fight to get them out, and, mm -hmm. and it's a problem. So what happened was I, I sent the emails out to remind everybody. I got an email back right away saying that people were not happy about it. And I said, it's not a matter of convenience anymore. Everybody has to move them out. And we do have people who are pregnant in the, uh, or breastfeeding mothers, we have made a situation where they can, you know, have a place to go with their breast milk and put it in a refrigerator, so we have those all set. But we feel it's the only way. I mean, we can't keep track of these appliances. We even know one day and somebody had a hot plate on inside the school. I mean, you know, what is going on? You know? mm -hmm. So you, do you feel like the procedure, I, I guess what my question is, is what can we do as a board I, so I, that these things are, first of all, in place so that they, and then who holds, who's the cop? I, I think if we made it a policy, it would be a lot better to enforce a procedural aspect because I have a feeling what's going to happen when we didn't uh, make it uh, permanent, um, people brought the stuff back last year and it got back in the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, some people that. just refuse to give it up. They'll tell you, well, I'm not giving up my refrigerator. I'm not taking it out. So, you know, it's <laughs> tough, you know. We don't want to make enemies. We're trying no. to, you know, we're trying to make things better. But Patrick's so. coming in in another couple of weeks, and I think we're going to begin our work together, and I think that's definitely that's an important of, one. I think. couple of things that we I think we can't, I think it's really critical that we don't become code violation have code violations happening from either ignorance of the of the people allowing it to happen or whatever. It just needs to be something that is really clear so that we're just not doing that. If, if I can just take two more minutes to bring up another aspect. No door is supposed to be blocked open with wedges and wedges I think are issues in this district. <laughs> and we've tried to get the wedges out. And we show up at a school, and one day it was a teacher running from the playground, saying, "Oh, Alden's here. He's gonna, you know, he's gonna see my wedge. It's against code. You can't lock these doors open." We had we had one teacher that took off the hardware, so it wouldn't be connected, so she could leave the door open. And why do they do that? Why do they do that? They say that they're too they're too hot. So is the ventilation in the room adequate? Uh, I think it is. I think it is. Yeah. I think the same it, ventilation that needs to be cleaned? Yeah. Well, yeah, but, you know, these things have been tested. We had, the, we had the Department of Labor in here a little over a year ago because there was a complaint filed about the air quality in this building. And I was called up by Carol. I came over. She asked me to come over, and I came over, and I spoke to the inspector, and I said, look, you go anywhere you want to go. I'll take you to every room you want to go to. It's not, there's not a problem with what they were saying. And they came and tested it, and they gave us a clean slate, because I made them go into every room that they think there was a problem, and we followed them around, and, and I said, we want to go to three more, four more, whatever you go to them. And basically, we want to make sure that people understand that we're trying to
keep the air quality as good as it can. Now, I said that, uh, when I said before that we need to clean the vents, but I think this was a, this is unrelated. They just want to keep their doors open, and that's what it is. And you just can't do it. It's a, it's a code violation. So what happened was the fire marshal can come, and I think the fine on those could be as much as five hundred dollars per. I'm time. not advocating for wedges yeah, in yeah, any way. Yeah, yeah, I'm so, not. I'm just, yeah, under, no, I'm, I'm, just, just I'm just yeah, I'm curious just as to, to why people would be motivated to do that. Because they want to. That's really what you because they just want to be a pain. They just. Yeah. I think it's probably because they want some airflow. Yeah. I haven't asked anybody, so I don't know. I don't have any data. I'm just yeah. curious. Yeah. I think I think what happened. I think what happens in, it, when it starts to feel like your room and your house, yeah. and this is my stuff, and I, that's why I get to bring my refrigerator in and my coffee maker and all of my things, and so of course I can prop the door open if I want to. I think that's more of what it, what it is. So I think that the, that's why it feels like if we, can, if we have to resort to policy, then we need to do that, but we also need to have an enforcer. And it's obvious that the enforcer has to be the principals in the building initially. I would, I would hope that that's where it would be. Exactly. Come because true. you can't expect a custodian to be the enforcer. Mm -hmm. um, so, there, so I feel like that's like one of those waterfall effects that we need to deal with at some point. Right. But I mean, I also believe that maybe having Patrick in on this discussion mm -hmm. would be important because maybe it's just sharing the communicating the information this is why we need to do this mm -hmm. and maybe that 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 might not reach all the people but it may reach some of the people and start it starts trickling through the building so well, I, just I really the other think having thing Patrick is, involved. Alden is another one of my reports I have many reports you know because I cover IT food service and Alden comes to me in frustration because he can't control those doors being blocked open all the time. And even though he sends them emails, he talks to the principal, you get nowhere with it. And it's a problem. Uh, I have several running notes on that tour. Right. Okay. And one other thing, there's been a suggestion you guys here at the at the high school don't have to worry about that because we've already put camera around the building but the recommendation from all from Amando because I told him I I didn't feel comfortable putting cameras in an elementary school building but uh, he recommended that we put them around the outside of the building and just a little over a week ago somebody tried to get into Moncton school so you know we've already had break-ins at Lincoln and Starsboro within the last two years and we had uh, tech equipment taken so you know and you don't get it back. It's just hard to get it back, uh, and, and it's an expensive proposition. So. Okay. All right. Thanks, Barbara. You're welcome. All right. So now we're going to move down. Mary's giving me the wind it up. <laughs> Response to the May monitoring reports. Um, we'll start with that one just to keep it clean. Let me find. Tell you what that what they all are, so you'll remember. So the May one was um, C1.1, which was uh, core subjects in a digital and global environment. And then we have, that's the next one. And then we have the, the uh, 2.6, which was asset protection. And we had 2.5, which was emergency superintendent succession. And 2.3 that we have to respond to. Um, these are all, they were all presented at past meeting, the May meeting. And we'll start with that. Benita. I make the motion to um, approve, accept the interpretation and the, um, and, and find them all in compliance as presented. So, whatever the wording is there. Um, the super, the intent, er, interpretation is reasonable and the data demonstrates the interpretation. So, the motion is it. that those be marked yes and we res, um, sign off on the, the response. Yes. There's a second. 
I'll second. Julie. Any discussion around the monitoring reports that we received? Okay. All those in favor of that the interpretation was reasonable and the data accomplished this interpretation and signing off on C1.1, 2.3, 2.5, and 2.6, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Okay. That's that. I'll get easy signing. And then um, in March, <coughs> the next one we have is a response to the March monitoring report, which was uh, C1.3 learning and innovation skills and that's the one we uh, had the carousel meeting at Bristol and we went around and saw the students work so Anita. Same motion, ditto. All right, is there a second? I'll second. All right, any further discussion? All right, all those in favor of a uh, that the interpretation is reasonable and the data accomplish this interpretation and the signing off on March's monitoring report C1.3, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. All right. Moving down, um, it's time to appoint a new, bar new bargaining <coughs> council members, representatives, and we typically appoint three. Um, in, where it's expected in the fall that the process will begin again. So, here we are. I'd like to nominate the previous slate. Except for me. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to nominate Barry, just the same. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, now we can discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no discussion, I don't think. <laughs> um, I need to not be on that committee again this year. Well, that's a lot of spare. You should do this a little bit. Jody, can we nominate somebody that's not here? <laughs> uh, well, heck yeah. Yeah, I guess you can. <laughs> I'd like to nominate Jim McClay. Well, we got to finish this one, oh, so, so we got to sort of. Okay, so I, I will amend my motion to um, without Barry. So it would be Don. Or, or no, are you yes, asking? Yes. Mm -hmm. No, you're, I am. you're this. Okay, am so this. Don and Jody would be the two representatives. That from the original slate. From the original slate. Right. Can Jody? Can Jody? Second that. I will second Benita's amended motion. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she can amend her, I mean, she can second her own. <coughs> yeah. Okay. That's yeah. fine. Okay. <laughs> She's willing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right. Any discussion? We'll, we'll go, we'll, we'll, we can break it into two. And, or, or, since Benita already amended it, or, actually we're voting on the amendment. Mm -hmm. So I didn't make it. I thought she changed her motion. No. No, she well, she amended. <laughs> That's so silly. All right. So the the amendment that you're voting on is whether to make the motion myself and Jody for the next bargaining council members. All those in favor of that motion, please say of that amendment to the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so now the motion is. <laughs> do I nominate or do I just do a motion? Well, That's there's still the original still motion. You. Now the um, modified motion is still out there. So we, have, so, we still are voting on you. So we could vote on that, and then you could make an, a motion to add for the third member, and that would be cleaner than yeah, amending the amended motion. Let's do that. All right, so. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor of Jody and myself as bargaining council members, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Now we still need one more member. Imagine that. Jody. I'd like to nominate Jim McClay. <laughs> Jim? Oh, Jim's not here. <laughs> I'll sign <send> it. <laughs> all right. All right. So worst he can do is say no, exactly. and then we bring it up. And then we meeting. bring it up at the next right. meeting. Right. Yeah. So. 
Any further discussion about nominating Jim as the third member? All right, all those in favor of nominating Jim McClay as the third member of the Bargaining Council for Mount Abraham, please, Representative for Mount Abraham, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? All right. All right, okay, got that taken care of. Whew. Is there any other? I have another, in case anybody missed it. The the boys' varsity Woo baseball yeah. team took the state championship Woo for Division Two. Woo state history, the only team with a losing record to ever take the <laughs> championship. <laughs> but it was an awesome game. Yeah. They pulled it together, and they just were having a great time at the game. Yeah, it wasn't even close. It was yeah. 11 to 1. And crazy. Yeah. crazy. I mean, they were, they... Whatever Stetson did to talk to them to get them to regroup, they regrouped and they got it because they just were on fire at that game. That's great. And there was a great turnout. There were a ton of Maui people down there cheering them on at Centennial Field. So it was a great, great. And even Adam Wickham got up on the dugout and was dance, getting the crowd going, dancing. It was, it was a great game. Awesome. All right, anybody else have another? All right, we'll move down to C2.8 communication and support to board. Allison, we're going to call on you again for the Act 46 update. Sure. We have moved to weekly meetings. Um, we have contracted with a lawyer, Steve Stitzel, to be our legal counsel. Um, we have articles of agreement that Steve is reviewing, and um, as we make changes to the articles, we send them to the AOE for their review to make sure it matches or is acceptable. Um, we have a meeting tomorrow night, which was supposed to be another community forum all boards meeting to approve the report and the articles of agreement, but seeing as how when we needed to do that, we didn't have a report, uh, we've shifted that to July 18th as a possibility. So we've um, talked about the timeline, and a motion was made and failed to move it to town meeting day. So it's still on for November 8th and we will have a continuous look at the timeline to make with what we're doing to make sure that we're going to meet that timeline. Um, so that's where the July 18th piece comes in. Katrina is helping us with the report and um, putting pieces in there. So we'll be talking about that tomorrow night. Um, we have a few more articles of agreement that we're working on, uh, hashing out, and we'll look at the uh, lawyers' comments tomorrow night. Um, did I miss something? No, you did the report and the articles and mm -hmm. timeline. Time, yeah. Um, do you have a question? I do. Um, my question is. Uh, we, we, there was a boilerplate, right? For yes. The, for the articles? Yes. Are there you guys just wordsmithing into the ground? Is that what's going on? Because usually the boilerplates that have already been approved by the for AOE other, yeah, and yeah, everybody else, and it's already been vetted, it's usually the best place to go and, there's, and try not to change anything because then you've got to go back through this whole process. So what's what's the story there? Exactly what you described. Mm -hmm. ah, words are thing. And concerns. Mm -hmm. yeah. People have concerns about one thing or another thing. And we're able, through discussion, we're able to reach pretty much a consensus. And you can see the articles that are that have passed. Um, and or the ones that just have a little bit of language that we're checking into to make sure either we're correct or we're not, and we'll have to take it out. Um, as it gets discussed, 
the issues get winnowed out and a decision gets made. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we even have one article. We might have one article. We've discussed them all. Yeah. We've had um, four potentially, well, six potentially to be added. Two were added, three were voted down, and one was withdrawn. Um, and there's one about the proportional representation issue, voting at large and all of that, um, that we're going to talk about tomorrow night based on the comments from the lawyer. Um, but other than that, the articles have taken a long time. Yes. They yeah. Have. Very long. That's time. what happens when everybody starts wordsmithing. It's too bad that the boilerplate wasn't able to be embraced more. Um, my, I have another concern. My concern. I have two concerns. One is that I've been reading information that's been coming out from different board reports, um, and there's. There doesn't seem to be common language in the reporting out that's coming out of that committee, uh, in your <laughs> that 46 committee. And um, so, for instance, when I read in uh, the Starksboro scoop, it seemed slanted to me, and I, and I had concerns about it, actually, and I actually um, let you guys know that. Because I feel like if that if there's language coming out of that committee at this point, because the committee is working as a board, quasi board, there should be common language. So I feel like it's really critical that everybody's on the same page with the language that's being put out. Number one, and number two, the other thing I never read in any of it is this is a law. Every you know when you call it Act Forty, when people say Act Forty Six, people kind of think, oh, we have a choice. And it's a law. So the choices are getting slim and far and few between the longer we play around. So I just think that I would like to see both of those things. I would really love to see that people get reminded this is the law. And it has to be done by a certain date. I think it needs to be in the language when we report out to the republic, I mean to the public, so that it's clear. So that they're not thinking, oh, they can just say no forever. Because you can't say no forever. From my understanding. So I think that, though, I really feel like those two things are really critical. I think that people at home, when they're reading information, if, if they're not reminded that this is a law, like my mom and other people who are going to have to vote on this, they're going to not even realize that. They're just going to think, oh, this is a big change. I don't know if I feel comfortable. And so they say, oh, this is a law, so we need to figure out how to get there. So those are my concerns. I think the chair addressed some of those concerns that you brought to the, the, to the group and shared them with the, the group. Yes, yes. So, yeah. it's, it's just hard because we're a small group and we're busy doing other things too for the district and um, trying to get the correct information out there mm -hmm. in a timely fashion. Um, and trying to get committee buy-in to that requires discussion with the committee. Um, some things were able to move along, but it, it was addressed, specifically the scoop mm -hmm. piece. And um, some, um, it, it was made clear that there should be no communications coming out about Act 46 unless it comes through the Act 46 communications working group mm -hmm. and if they feel it's necessary to the whole committee. Mm -hmm. um, and the person who produced the scoop was unapologetic and felt it was uh, evenly worded. Mm -hmm. And that's how that was. But it was made very clear nothing gets put out there by the community unless it goes through the communications group and they've approved it and then it goes through, through the committee. Because the communications group, there are some members on there that would like to put out actual facts mm -hmm. and tidbits mm -hmm. and information as we make decisions, mm -hmm. as things come, as mergers are approved or voted uh, yes or no, mm -hmm. um, when the Agency of Education comes out with a statement, you know, mm -hmm. we'd like to be able to respond to those things, but um, it's, it's happening so fast. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but 
You partially answered my question, I think. How does the committee choose to communicate with the public and the press? Are there press releases? Or you said there's a communication yep, committee. How a, does it, we have in general, how does it work? Not we have a communications working group. Okay. And that group um, decides how to put together the community forum that we had on May 9th and the one that we'll have coming up. Um, any communications that we put out, um, the communications working group worked on the survey that was sent out and um, we made sure that it looked the way, um, and it, that one actually went through the committee too and then came back and we worked on it, but we sent it out. How do you communicate to the press? Um, we had, oh, uh, Galen Murphy is our uh, Addison, Galen, Galen. sorry, yeah. um, Galen Murphy is our Addison Independent reporter and um, she came to the May 9th community forum and reported on that and then she spoke with Jen uh, Stanley who's our chair and um, put some of those things. So we've had one article in the Addison Independent. I think we've really only had one. I think so. um, and then I put in the Independent on the calendar for the May 9th community forum. And there are a lot of other ways that we can be communicating. Um, right now the web page is the Act 46 study committee minutes or agenda and minutes, like what we have for our, our other boards on the ANESU website. And then um, you, know, you can do things through Facebook and other uh, Front Porch Forum and other social media things. Um, when we had the community forum, I was using my own page to broadcast the information. I had a page for, uh, I co manage a page for the Bristol Elementary School. And I was posting the information there, but it it, it got overwhelming. I, I was doing front porch forum, Facebook, and the survey at the same time. Plus, I so just a follow up on. question to that, and then I'm done. So, any slant that gets applied to the information is on behalf of the reporter or the press, not on behalf of the committee. The committee's releasing one set of information. It, that one. so far has gone through one person, correct? So and we don't have control over the slant. Well, from, Excuse me, this what, committee doesn't have control over the slant. It, it releases whatever information. Whatever the media produces is what they produce. However, they decide to <clears throat> report it. And I think Ann did a really good in, impartial, she just commented, and there were people that made comments, and that's what she, you know, she made, they made their comments, but she, I didn't think she editorial, editorialized it. Um, and then, again, we made it clear that there are to be no communications um, without going through the communications working group because we're not trying to put a slant on it. It's the law and this is what we're doing and these are the facts that are around the law and these are the facts around what we're doing and it's simple but when you start to put um, emotion on it and thoughts and conjecture then it becomes difficult to um, determine the direction people think, except for that one direction. But well, that answers my question. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else have any? All right. Barry's saying nope. Nobody has anything left. <laughs> Keep moving. <laughs> He's good at his job. Um, next is the RBO committee update. The um, the end of May, the Objective 8 working group for the RBO had a session with the federal mediator to um, describe what alternative bargaining styles. So um, about 20, not quite 25 people attended. So, um, and the feedback they got back to that work group was that, you know, people were interested in trying and hearing about the alternatives. So the, um, Objective 8 group sent a recommendation to the RBO steering committee at saying, here's what we'd like to do, and the steering committee gave them their blessing. So they're sending a letter to ask um, to Patrick, our new superintendent, and to ANESU, and to Anita to say, are you interested in, in you know, at least some training or looking at other alternative bargaining models? So um, as part of that, um, explaining that. I'm, I'm taking a temperature of this group. 
to know when when you know it comes down to the board chairs getting together and talking about what everybody had to say. And I'd like to hear what you think. Are you interested in in looking at a, a different form of bargaining, or are you still interested in trying the same way, Joey? I went to that um, bargaining model. The model. model with was it Cindy? Cynthia Jeffries. Yeah. yeah. Um, which was great. I thought it was great. I was disappointed there were no teachers there. Maybe I didn't see any. My wife was there, so she was. was she was. Okay, I don't know your yeah. wife, so yeah. My apologies. Um, like Cindy said, I mean, I'm all for it. I think we need to do something different. The 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 traditional bargaining is not working for the boards. Mm -hmm. It's working great for the teachers. Um, I like the alternatives, but like Cynthia said, we need buy-in, 100% buy-in from everybody. And I think that's gonna be our problem. Right, so, so you know, the, Anita's gonna take it back to their group. They aren't gonna meet till later. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to have a discussion. They have the same concerns, I would say, that you know, getting the buy-in. Um, I'm just looking, you know, to you to say, are you interested? So that when, when I, you know, the letter comes and we have to have information, I just want to know how this board feels. Anita, um, my concern, which I didn't think Cynthia addressed very well that night when I asked this question, was where does the Vermont NEA come into this? Because, yeah, we are, we're talking about the local Anita, but that is a whole different group than the, than the Vermont NEA. And I don't know how you're going to get buy-in from the Vermont NEA, but they certainly drive the bus. So I, I just, you know, I don't... I'm jaded, and I've been through this too long, and that's why I'm not serving on anything more anymore. But I feel like it's... I just want everybody to go into this with eyes wide open and not be expecting the moon and the sun because um, the NEA is who's in control. So, you know, not to give up the ship. I just want to make sure we, we hold on to the ship as best we can. Anyone else? All right. Um, the RBO group has reserved some days with Cynthia just to block time out their schedule and then when we all decide, you know, she'll keep or get rid of those days. But they have blocked out four days in, in September to sort of have some training time. But that'll, you know, if, if the majority of the boards decide to go for it and the rest of the groups can get their people on board, then we'll go ahead. But if not, they just want to block out the time of your schedule to hold them. So that's where that's going. Oh, now we're down to policy and governance. Maybe update. Oh, here it is right now. <laughs> So um, that group has been meeting, um, and they've finished up their work for the year. And um, so Mary Kate is the chair of that group, and she was uh, at the executive committee meeting, and she went over um, some revisions to the charge that the executive committee sort of and the SU board gave that group when they formed. Um, so. Um, she just had executive committee members look over it to see if it was complete, and they make a determination at the next meeting whether to vote the new changes in. Um, they have worked on, uh, re you know, how the reports are generated and the acceptance process, and they've got that sort of worked out. Um, we saw, we all saw that sort of. Um, uh, under a board monitoring, a couple months ago, we had a, an example of board monitoring, and we all looked at that. Um, they're continuing to look at policies. Um, they found that there were some policies that got moved into procedures that are actually in conflict with our policies. So they're trying to, you know, go through, look through those, and make recommendations, and that'll go through. Um, it's the process that's been set up. So they're doing that. And they're still developing templates and metrics for board accountability. They'll be looking at the board self-assessment. And uh, 
they hope to be looking at some templates and metrics for direct inspection so that that can happen. You know, we've talked about that. A number of boards have talked about that as far as like seeing student work and you know how that could provide information and it's not been used. So they're looking at that. Um, and they'll continue to report and make recommendations to the executive committee, um, and they're going to start working on sorting out which duties the executive committee would hold and which the SU board will retain. Um, so that's what, where their work is now. Question? Any question? All right. That brings us down to the consent agenda. I need to move to approve the consent agenda. Okay. So second. Second. Very second. Okay. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Any abstention? All right. Okay. Any other visitors' business? <laughs> no. No? Okay. Any others? <laughs> no, thank you. It's not even that. All right. Then we. I just need signatures. Right. Oh, okay. On the tax anticipation. So you need a majority of the board. That's. Yep. The on the tax anticipation. Then. So there aren't enough lines for a majority of the board. Do you want us to just sign underneath? Yeah. Do you want? Yeah. yeah is that I don't know why they didn't give us enough lines. Okay. okay. Let's do it. We need two columns. Yeah. yeah make two yeah, columns. Yeah. Make yeah. two columns. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don, I just have I just have one thing I wanted to say. Um, Carol's not here, but I just wanted to say that. Um, Carol Fenimore came in under some tough circumstances this year, and uh, I think we really appreciate her being here for the year, and wish her well on her next voyage, wherever that might be, um, just so that she knows, she hears that. Yeah, she was expected to be here, so I don't know what yeah, happened. I'm surprised she wasn't here. Yeah. That'll be captured in our minutes, and I think we all say thank you. Yes, definitely. All right. Anything else? What is it that we're citing? The tax anticipation note that was included in item C in the uh, consent agenda. Okay. Yeah. Howard, there's one page on here that I don't think we all need to sign. No, you don't sign it. You don't sign that one. I'm not going to pass that, that one. That gets signed by the treasurer. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so I'll just pass this around. Is Steve Barcelona still on this board? Yes. Okay, okay. okay. I'm going to pass it. Just make an extra column. It works a really weird schedule. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make sure right. I put it in the middle. So. so all the places where it says sign here. Yeah, all the places that it says sign here. It's not another yeah. column. Yeah. All right. No. So we can adjourn. Very, you cracked the whip. <laughs> Keep us pretty close. Oh, we started last, last 12 minutes. minutes, 11 minutes late. Move to adjourn. All right, Benita moves to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Auto. 24. <laughs> All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. Oh, you know, aye, aye. please. Any opposed? <laughs> Any abstention? All right. Thank you. So, Howard, you want the second call?